Good morning again, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the GHS Let's Talk About It annual Title I meeting. Um, this is, um, good morning. My name is Dr. Deidre Elam and I'm the GHS Parent Liaison. Our principal here at Griffin High School is Mr. Herbert Chambers, and we would like to say welcome to everyone who is here who's joining us. Again, for those members who are joining us, if you're interested in being a part of our um, school council, please note your name in the chat and I will reach back out to you after this meeting. During today's meeting, some items that we're going to discuss, we're going to talk all about Title I. We're going to make sure that you have a full understanding of what it is, what it entails, and how we um, utilize our title funds to support our students here. We're going to talk about our school improvement plan, and you may hear um, the acronym SIP, and that's what we're talking about. We're going to talk about our school performance data. We're going to talk about um, our Title I um, parent and family engagement policies. We're going to talk about it on the school level and the district level. We're going to talk about our school parent compacts, parents' right to know, um, the manner in which we use our Title I um, and parent engagement funds our curriculum, instruction and assessments, um, our parent and family engagement opportunities and contact information after this meeting so you'll have someone to reach out to um, once this meeting is over. We have with us this morning, um, Dr. Randall. He is here and he's gonna share with you um, the purpose. Well, I'll share with you the purpose of the meeting today and then Dr. Randall will come in and share additional information with you as well. Um, Every year at the beginning of the school year, we have our annual Title I meeting and we come in and we discuss our school-wide program. And this is to make sure that you are informed as our parents and community members about things that our district and our school is doing um, in regards to our school improvement plan, as well as our policy and our compact. Um, we want to share information with you um, so that you will be able to engage with us understand the opportunities that you have as well as how our school is performing the different types of curriculum and instruction that we are providing to our students and how we assess um, their learning as um, just to make sure that you're aware that griffin high school has a school-wide title one program and that we're conducting this meeting um, to make sure that we're meeting the guidelines for title one dr randall at this time There we go. Sorry, my menu disappeared on me for just a moment. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, rather. I'm Dr. Randall. I am the Assistant Principal for Curriculum and Instruction, so welcome to our Title I meeting. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with what Title I is, Title I is a federal program that provides money to schools when there's a, a sizable population that is qualified for free and reduced lunch. Uh, as many of you may know, Griffin Spalding County Schools is a Title I district, meaning that the entire district and all the schools within it are considered Title I. Well, when we receive those federal funds from the government, we're able to use them for specialized instructional programs. We can add in some additional teachers. We can use that for supplemental resources, uh, provide specialized training for teachers, as well as to provide opportunities for our parents to engage in, in workshops and boot camps and things like that. Um, all of our parent engagement activities are funded through Title I funds, um, and, and in part, the ability to have Dr. Elam with us is paid for through Title I. Um, so that's really kind of the, the basis of what Title I actually is. All right, Dr. Elam, if you could forward for us. All right, so Dr. Elam uh, a moment ago mentioned that we'd be talking about our school improvement plan. Each year, um, schools are required to engage in what's called a comprehensive school improvement plan, where we're meant to look at the entire instructional program from start to finish and, and develop goals that we want to improve on for the year. Um, it's a fairly lengthy process. We start in about March. We have meetings with our students. We have meetings with faculty. We have meetings with parents. And we go over all of our school data and how that will inform what it is that we're actually looking at. So as you see there, our mission is to establish a safe and rigorous learning environment where students have opportunities to experience success in order to compete in a global society. So with that mission, we use that to guide that school improvement process because we wanna make sure that everything we do aligns to our school mission and the district mission. Uh, 
when we create the school improvement goal, a school improvement plan is structured in a way that we use SMART goals. What SMART goals are is that they have to be specific, meaning we have a very particular purpose that we're working towards. It has to be measurable. In other words, we have to have some sort of measure that we can use to determine whether or not we're being successful. Um, it has to be attainable, meaning it has to be something that's realistic that we, you know, we'd love to say, yeah, we're going to have 100% students that are in the distinguished range on all tests, but that's not necessarily an attainable goal. So we want all of our goals to be attainable. They have to be realistic, meaning that it has to be focused in a way that makes sense, and it has to be time-based. Um, so the SMART goals that we've, des we've established for our school for this year is that we're going to decrease our office referrals by 10%, from 720 to 648 referrals. So I know that number sounds like a lot, but that includes everything from bus referrals to, you know, tardies to, you know, the more significant offenses. Um, our second goal is that from August of 2022 to May of 2023, 20% of our students will move from developing to proficient on cognitive, common formative assessments. Last year, your, your students and scholars may have talked about our benchmarks. Um, that is the common formative assessment that we're going to be using are our school design formative assessments. Each of the content areas are going to be responsible for creating a, a, a test or an assessment that is given in all of those light contents. So meaning all of our world history teachers will give the same assessment. Our American lit teachers will give the same assessment. Our goal in doing so is that one, we're trying to gauge whether or not the students have mastery of the content. Then as they move from benchmark number one, which is at the four and a half week marking period, to benchmark two at the nine week marking period, we carry some of those same standards over and we're looking for our students maintaining proficiency or increasing their proficiency as we move from time to time and we build in these new standards. So we're looking for a 20% increase uh, in proficiency on those common formative assessments. Um, our goal number three is during the 2022-2023 school year, Griffin High School will increase parent and community engagement from 41 families to 50 families. Um, based on the number of uh, families I see joining us today, it seems like we're going to have no problem exceeding that number between the meeting this morning and our meeting this afternoon. And we just want to continue that trend throughout the school year. Goal number four is from August of 2022 to May of 2023, GHS will increase the end of course assessment scores on American literature uh, from developing through distinguished by five percentage points. What we're looking for are those students who are um, really scoring in the proficient distinguished range, we wanna move them higher. The other part of that goal that's not necessarily listed there is that we're also looking at the Lexile score of our students. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Lexile, it's basically a reading measure. Um, our MAP assessments, the end of course tests, all of those assessments give us a Lexile level on our students. And according to measures that the state has given us, we expect students who graduate high school to be at a 1250 Lexile. So we're really trying to make sure that we've got all of our students at that particular Lexile and we're trying to grow that number by at least 20% as well. Our final goal is from August of 2022 to uh, May of 2023 that we want to increase our end of course scores in the Algebra 1 test, developing through Distinguished by five points. So we want to move all of those students at, a, at the developing level and higher. We want uh, at least 45.1 to 50%. So we're moving from 45 to 50 is where we want everybody on that developing and to Distinguished range. Um, at the bottom of this slide, you're going to see a link that will allow you to kind of explore our school improvement plan with a little bit greater detail. So you're welcome to click on that uh, when Dr. Elam shares this out later. Um, some highlights from our school performance data. Um, and again, this is all coming from our milestones assessment that was taken in, in May and in December. Because um, we do give those assessments twice in the year um, at the completion of each semester. Uh, since we're on the block schedule. So as you all know, your students complete four classes in the, in the winter semester or fall semester, whichever way you want to call that, and then four on the spring semester. And then if they're in an end of course test, they're going to test at the end of those classes. So what we saw from our data this year is that while math isn't quite exactly where we want it to be, we are trying to grow and we saw significant growth, particularly in our second semester of last year. Uh, when we put a lot of structures in place and we have carried those forward. So we're, we're confident that we're going to be able to continue moving our students towards that, that distinguished range on the test. Um, 
on the American literature test, that was one of our highest performing areas uh, for the both winter and spring. Uh, we had students scoring in the 60% range for proficient and distinguished. So we're, we're looking forward to continue moving that trend forward. Um, so uh, like I said, our ELA data was definitely probably one of our standouts. Um, math is our, our biggest area for opportunity, but like I said, we've got our benchmarks in place and we've got some structures that we're looking forward to continuing to move that, the performance forward. Thank you, Dr. Randall. Mm -hmm. now, I want to share information with you about our Title I parent and family engagement. Um, please note that for Title I schools, they al um, allocate about 1% of their budget, um, of their Title I budget, um, towards the programs, activities, and the procedures um, for their parents and their family engagement. Um, please note that we're asking families to give us feedback during our meetings so that we will know how to plan different programs and activities um, for you. So please make sure that when you receive um, those surveys or any feedback um, regarding Title I or parent engagement that you complete those activities. I know that early on throughout, um, since we've been back in school, I have shared with you um, the fall parent survey for this year. Please make sure that you um, take a, take your time and participate by giving us feedback and input um, for that particular survey. You will have an opportunity before this meeting end to do the same thing and to make sure that you're giving us your feedback, your input as to what things you want to see here at Griffin High School. Also, when it comes to ESSA or Every Student Succeeds Act, this is a requirement of Title I. Um, and we're making sure that we're working together with you as a family member, family unit, to promote the academic success for all students. Um, we will talk about our school parent compact, and this is a part of making sure that we work together and different strategies and tools that we're sharing with our families as well as our students as to how they can be academically successful. Um, we also um, do things together jointly. It, all of our documents are jointly developed. We're asking for feedback. We have our stakeholder meetings in the fall, I'm, I'm sorry, in the spring, and that is usually in the month of March. And we're asking for information from you about development for the next year or the next school year. We also distribute to our families and family members, community members, our policy, and this is distributed to you throughout the year. Whenever we're having any type of meetings, we're sharing this information with you. It is also available in our front office as well as our parent resource center here in our counselor's office. So if you want a physical copy, you can actually pick one up or it is on our um, school website on the parents tab. And when I get to that slide, I'll show you as well. Um, please make sure that you visit our um, school website. And on our school website, we have our, as Dr. Randall talked about, our school parent, um, our school improvement plan. And again, remember the, the acronym SIP as well as our policy in our school parent compact. And you're able to click on this when I share the, the um, presentation out um, after this meeting, or you can go to the Griffin High School website and click on the parents tab and you'll see our parent engagement resources. Dr. Randall. All right, what you are looking at right now is our district improvement plan or our roadmap to success. So if you take a look at those green blocks, those are the major focus areas for the district. So we're looking at organizational and operational efficiency. We're looking at maintaining a high performing staff, developing our family and community engagement and improving our student achievement. The blue blocks to the left of those green goals are, are areas that we're, we're really striving to improve on. So we're looking at presenting a safe and supportive learning environment, providing effective and efficient operations, and then aligning the resources to students and staff needs as we look at that operational and or organizational efficiency. When we talk about our high-performing staff, we want to cultivate a committed workforce. We want to support their professional growth and make sure that it's effective, and we want to make sure that we're attracting high-quality candidates. 
Um, hopefully, as we go through the school year, you're going to see that we're really excited about the staff that we have in the building. We've had a, a great number of really good additions to this year, and I think that your students are really going to benefit from having the opportunity to be in their classrooms. Uh, when we look at family and community engagement, we're trying to address the diverse needs of our students. Um, we're trying to provide proactive communication of information. Uh, we're trying to leverage our business and community partnerships and build those partners in education. Student achievement is obviously a, a strong focus, so we're looking at making sure that we have a viable and coherent curriculum, that we have an engaging and high quality instruction, and that we're preparing our students to be college and career ready. Now, when we look at all these things, we're leveraging it against the idea that we have to have good leaders, we have to have good strong teachers, and that we've got to make sure that our students are actually learning. Um, so that's, that's the, the idea behind our district improvement plan and our roadmap to success here in Griffin Spalding Schools. All right, so our school improvement plan, I kind of went over our SMART goals. When we look at all of those different goals that we had, um, as I mentioned before, they're all going to tie back to one of those district goals that we talked about, that organizational operational efficiency. That, re that goal is reflected in our school improvement goal with uh, reducing our office referrals. And that ties in specifically with that subset of creating a safe and secure learning environment. When we talk about the high quality workforce, we're really looking at the idea that we're helping our students and the teachers grow by looking at how well they're performing with our students. The parent satisfaction surveys will tie into that parent and community engagement goal that focuses on improving communication because we want to make sure that you're well informed about what's happening here in our school in our school. And then that last big area of student achievement, we actually have those two goals for Lexiles and for improving on Algebra 1. Both of those tie into that academic achievement by implementing a coherent and viable curriculum. And again, all these goals really came about through meetings with teachers, meeting with parents, and meeting with students. So that way we had input from all of our major stakeholders to make sure we're focusing on the right areas as we, as we try and improve the school. What you're looking at on the screen is um, a copy of, or a screenshot of our school parent and family engagement policy. Again, this is developed when we're working together. Um, we come together annually in the spring during our stakeholders meetings and we're asking for input. We look at the previous year's um, policy and then we discuss um, things that need to be changed and we make those adjustments. And so basically our policy um, entails what Title I is, um, how we revise our policy. It tells you um, what the policy is, what it states, um, what, we, what it's used for and what's available. And so where it's available also in our school um, is detailed in our policy as well as it talks about our um, parent and family engagement um, resource centers here at the school as well as in the district. It tells you about how we're going to use our funds. And so what you can do again after this meeting is you can click on the link and or you can go directly to our um, school website and click on the parents tab and you will again be able to read our policy in full. Um, you should or if you have not received it because it's going to be mailed to every family, it is coming to you. So you'll have a physical um, copy of the school parent and family engagement policy in hand for you to refer to at any time. Anytime you want to give us feedback on our policy, you can do that throughout the year. Um, but we do come together in the spring and we spend time looking at it in detail and discussing things that we can change um, to make it better for the next year. It also outlines what we're going to do together um, to ensure that your students are academically successful. It talks about all the different activities that are um, going to be available to you and your families, but we need your input to make sure that we are giving you what you need. Um, when you're looking at our school parent um, compact, Again, we're working together to develop this jointly developed document. Just like the policy, we come together in the spring to develop our um, school parent compact. Um, and so it outlines exactly what it is, 
It tells you how we develop it. It talks about these activities that we um, offer to build our partnership with you as parents, as guardians, as community members. It also talks about how we're going to communicate with you about your student learning. And so we have open house, and many of you participated in that. We have our upcoming um, student showcase or our literacy night. Um, we have parent teacher conferences that are available to you at any time. You can um, request those. Um, as well as the report cards and the progress reports that will go home. Um, we also have our school council. Um, we will have um, our website, our social media platforms, as well as the parent link calls. And those are automated calls and emails that go out to you. And many of you receive that information um, to be a part of today's meeting, along with phone calls from myself individually to you. Again, our school parent compact is on our website under the parents tab, and you're able to go on and look at that. We have copies in our um, front office as well as our parent resource center, and those items are available to you as well. And this is just the back of it um, or the inside copy of inside of the parent um, school parent compact. It outlines the district goals as well as the school goals and Dr. Randall has covered those as well as our focus area and this year we are focused on literacy and numeracy um, and so we wanted to make sure that we are putting this information in the school parent compact so that you're fully aware. Um, we have sent home notification by students as well as when you came here for open house and I've shared it out weekly. If you have not had an opportunity to read our um, school parent compact please make sure you do so as well as complete the acknowledgement form which is the cover letter that notes that you have received the um, school parent compact you have to do one for each of your scholars so if you have not done so before you leave today please make sure that you um, complete one for your scholars so that we'll have that information on file it is a mandate of Title I that we have a signed cover letter from all of our scholars. So we're just sharing this information out with you. And this is the reason why we're asking. When it comes to the parent's right to know, um, you have a right to know about your, teach, your student's teacher qualifications in the classroom. Um, please note that you have the right to know whether the teacher has met the state qualifications and the licensing criteria. Um, for the subject areas that they're going to be teaching. Um, you have the right to know if they're teaching on an emergency or provisional status. Um, and there have been some waivers. You have the right to know whether they're being provided services by um, individuals in our school, such as parapros, and as well as their qualifications. But please note, which on, on the bottom of the screen, that the system. GSCS has a waiver for teacher qualifications for this particular school year. Um, and it applies to all teachers other than those teaching special education. So um, again, just like the policy, the parents rights to know will be mailed to you if you've not received it, it is coming. Um, so please be on the lookout for that because you um, will be given, you're usually given a copy of this annually. When we are talking about Title I, we most definitely have to talk about the manner in which we use our funds. And so again, as I spoke um, earlier, I told you that we um, allocate about 1% of our total Title I budget to fund our family engagement um, activities um, that we utilize to engage our families. Um, we have set aside money and that money is used for materials for our workshops, our meetings, as well as to purchase items for our parent resource center. And if you look at the chart um, during our last school year, this is how we spent our money. 93.8% um, of the money was spent on print and communication. 3.2% um, was spent on materials and supplies and 3.1% was spent on books. And um, I have those books in house. So if you would like to come in and check out any books, we have books on um, things such as mathematics that you can use to help your scholars at home, as well as literacy um, things that you can do, strategies that you can do. If there's anything in the Parent Resource Center that I do not have, um, if you let me know, I'm able to get those and you can check them out for an unlimited amount of time. You just have to make sure that you return them. This year, we've set aside $6,425 
um, to be utilized for parent engagement. And so we want to make sure that we're utilizing this to meet the needs of our family. So if you have any suggestions about how we should use this money, besides what you see on the screen, um, printing communication, materials, supplies, and books, please make sure that you um, share that information with me or um, ask about anything. I'm also going to be incorporating some other things for our scholars, like trying to get um, some books for them to utilize when they're studying for the SAT and ACT. Um, that um, lends itself to the academic support as well as just getting them ready and keeping them on top of different things. Okay, Dr. Randall. All right, so all of our coursework is tied to what's called the Georgia Standards of Excellence. So every course from our our core content areas of math, science, English, and social studies, to our world languages, to our fine arts, and our CTAE classes are all under the auspices of, of what's called the Georgia Standards of Excellence. Standards are those things that guide what the students are supposed to know by the time they leave that class. So all of the instructional activities that the teachers do in the classroom should connect back to one of those standards. Inside of Griffin Spalding schools, we have developed something called this um, teaching and learning frameworks. Um, so you may have heard the term RCD before. These uh, teaching and learning frameworks have kind of replaced those. So there's a lot of the same material in there. Just we've tweaked it and improved it uh, in the current year. Um, so inside of each of these frameworks, the goal is that when our students leave us, they should be able to read, write, speak, and solve. What that means is they should be able to effectively communicate. They're reading on grade level. They're writing in a way that's effectively able to communicate their thoughts, ideas, and feelings, and that they can use their critical thinking skills to solve problems, whether it's mathematical or life in general. Um, our curriculum is, as Dr. Ela mentioned, our focus this year is numeracy and literacy. So we're really making sure that our students are focused on reading and literacy through that rise or reading improvement for student excellence initiative. Um, we're trying to ensure that our students are exposed to on grade level text, meaning that they're on that Lexile level for the particular grade level and that our teachers are working through those texts with the students because the only way they can read on that particular grade level is if we're exposing them to materials from that particular grade level. Uh, so when we talk about our curriculum, it's all going to tie back to those Georgia standards of excellence and the teaching and learning frameworks. Some other supplemental activities that, or, or materials or resources that we use inside the school is IXL. Um, if your student is placed in an interventional block during their instructional focus period, we're using IXL to help build their skills in both um, literacy and numeracy. So that way they can be successful in their academic classes and, and you know, be able to perform well on those milestone assessments. Khan Academy is a free resource that, that we use to help give students little snippets of information on content um, on particular standards as they need. So, you know, sometimes it's, it makes more sense to students when they hear it from a secondary source. So that's really the, uh, the use of Khan Academy. USA Test Prep is now actually called Progress Learning. And we use that program to help generate our benchmark assessments that I mentioned before. Additionally, it's got great resources aligned to the milestones test. So if your student is in biology, algebra one, American literature, US history, all the questions that are on USA Test Prep are very well aligned to the questions that they will see on the milestone test. So it's a great resource for them to be able to use and go on and practice. This year we increased our purchase so that way we have um, content in every area in the building except for some of our electives because they, they just don't have it there. But any core content area for um, within the building has access to progress learning. In addition to what the teachers assign, students also have the ability to go on to USA Test Prep and engage in practice work connected to the standards as well. There's also an arcade that they can go in and play games that are connected to the content as well. Um, STAR is also an in interventional program that we're using with our students who are on tier two and tier three for reading and math. That just means that they need some extra interventions and supports to be successful in those areas. Um, STAR is a program that will help assist with that. Um, Delta Math, much like Progress Learning, is a program to help provide content and assessment for our students in math. Um, many of our teachers will use that as the actual work um, in the particular class. 
uh, or, or, you know, to be able to remediate. So once a student takes a test, they may receive some assignments on Delta Math to help remediate uh, what they're looking, what they've done on those particular tests. Um, and then last is our teaching and learning framework that I mentioned, which is what we're using to guide our curriculum in each of the content areas. All right, what you're seeing right now is our assessment schedule for the year. So as you know, all of our students have a certain number of tests they have to take. Um, in August, we take a mid-month administration of the milestones, and those are for our students that are completing credit recovery or have done some work over the summer or missed the assessment in the spring of last year. Um, in our PE classes, all of our students are required to do a fitness gram, and that's basically an assessment of their physical act, uh, abilities. They do it at the beginning of the class and at the end of the class. Um, we're currently in the middle of our MAP assessment window. MAP is a uh, academic screener to kind of get an idea how our students are performing. And we take that test three times per year, once in August, once in January, and once in May. And we do that with our first time ninth and 10th graders. And again, that gives us an idea how they're performing in, in numeracy and literacy. We're able to generate a Lexile score from those particular tests. Um, so it gives us a lot of good information. In September, we'll again do another mid-month for those students that complete for credit recovery classes and or trying to catch those prior, prior administrations. The reason we do so many mid-month tests is because students have to take the milestone test. While it does only count for 20% of their final average in the classes where those tests are connected, in order to actually graduate, the test has to be completed. So if they've missed an assessment and, and potentially passed the class still, they're still not able to graduate unless those tests are taken. So that's why we offer these mid-month assessments. Um, when we roll into September, we're gonna do a PBIS universal screener and that kind of gives us an idea where our students might be struggling from an emotional standpoint. We use that information and refer them back to our counselors for those students that, that show as needing some of those supports and interventions. On October 25th, we're going to have the PSAT administration for all of our 10th graders. Um, any ninth grade student who is interested is able to take the test. They would just have to provide uh, the registration fee for that particular test. Uh, we'll have district benchmarks twice this year, uh, once in October and once in February. Our main mid administration for the milestones will take place from November 29th through December 7th. And again, that's our main administration for those students who are finishing a milestone course like Algebra One, Biology, American History, or American Literature. Um, we also will do an end of pathway assessment in December. Those are the tests that the students in the third year of a CTAE pathway take to show that they got proficiency in the content provided there. And in some cases will actually lead to industry certifications and things that they can use to help gain employment after graduation. Um, our semester exams are scheduled currently for December 16th, 19th, and 20th. Um, when we return to school in January, we'll start off with our access assessment, which is what we use for our students who come to us with a uh, native language other than English. Uh, we will continue, as I mentioned, with our map testing in January. Uh, we'll do another round of benchmarks in February, another round of mid-month testing for milestones, and that'll be for those that maybe missed that administration in December. Uh, we will continue with our mid-month testing in March. The GAA assessment that you see in mid-March is for our students who aren't on the regular curriculum due to um, some special needs that they have. Our main administration for milestones in the spring is going to take place starting April 18th. And then we have our advanced placement exams. Now, one of the things that I'd really like to kind of brag on the school for just a moment is that we've actually doubled our AP offerings this year. Uh, last year, we only offered five AP classes and we're offering 10 this year. And we've nearly doubled the number of students who are participating in advanced placement this year. So we're very excited about that. We'll end the year with our MAP testing and our end of pathway assessments and semester exams. And, and that's pretty much the assessment schedule for the year. Thank you, Dr. Randall. Again, I am Dr. Deidre Elam. I'm the GHS Parent Liaison. I'm also the graduation coach, but in this particular instance, I am serving as the Parent Liaison. Um, I am located here in the main office of the school. My office is room 1014, and you can call me at any time. Um, my phone number is here on the screen once I publish this, 
um, you'll be able to have access to it as well. When it comes to the Parent Resource Center, it is located in the counselor's office, and that is where um, you'll be able to find a wealth of resources. Any resource that is not available in the Parent Resource Center, I can provide to you. So please let me know if there's something that you need that's not there. Um, again, we have opportunities for you to um, join us and engage with us throughout the school year. Some of those opportunities include, as I've said before, our open house, um, our student showcase night, which is our literacy night, parent workshops, our parent teacher conferences, um, coming to the parent resource tables when we're having different activities here at the school. Please make sure that you're completing our fall and spring parent questionnaires, our surveys, our school website, our social media play, um, pages, as well as our different school and community events. I know um, that the district has um, different events. Our community partners have different events and we are there. So please make sure that um, you come out and visit us. Um, we are also looking for parent representatives. So throughout the school year, we will be asking um, for you to uh, participate, partner, as well as um, communicate with us about different things when it comes to our parent and family engagement. Um, the ways that we're going to communicate with you, um, at the very beginning of the school year, we communicate um, our expectations. We talk about our schedules during our open house. We talk about different things that the students will need to begin a successful school year. We also share information with you during our student showcase night, our literacy night. Um, you, again, can request a conference with the teacher at any time um, to discuss their progress um, as well as review their progress. Um, you can also talk to me about your student's school parent compact. Um, this will also be shared with you when you're meeting with the teachers. It's just a, a reinforcement of um, different strategies and skills that we're going to use to make sure that your student is academically successful. We also share information with you um, via the progress reports and report cards. So please make sure that you are um, paying close attention. Um, usually when those progress reports and report cards are going out, I will be giving you a uh, call or an email letting you know that these items are going to be coming out. And so the, the upcoming um, progress report, report will be um, in September. So please be looking for that. Um, also, we are updating our website every day. So any information that we have to share with you, that is being shared through our, um, our website. Um, as well as our Infinite Campus Parent Portal, you can log into there. Ms. Ms. Boswell, I see your hand. I'll get with you in just a second. Um, we share information with you, especially the grades via the parent portal, um, the monthly newsletters, um, our school marquee. Um, you will be receiving our weekly bear briefs that will be coming out via Ms. Higdon. She's going to be sharing those on Friday, um, as well as the other automated phone calls and emails that I send out to you. Ms. Boswell, do you have a question? Yes. Um, could you make sure I get an email when um, my grandson, his name is, the Jordan Williams report card is, I mean, you know, his progress report is due or just, you know, just send me an email of, you know, his grades, please. Yes, ma'am, I will. And um, what I'll do is once this meeting is over, I'll reach out to you and I'll make sure that I have all the information to make sure that you receive it timely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions about anything that we've said thus far? I want to make sure that I address any, any questions that anyone has. Good morning. Good yeah, morning. Somebody, somebody speak Spanish. Um, if not, what I can do is once this meeting is over, I can reach out to you oh, and okay. have a conversation with you. Uh, I got a question. How's use of the Infinite Campus? How's okay. Yes, ma'am. I will. I will. What I will do is, if you would put your student's name in the chat. I will reach mm -hmm. out to you and I will assist you with getting your infinite campus set up and, and help you and um, to understand how to navigate it as well mm -hmm. as put the app on your um, device so that you'll have something that will prompt you on a regular basis. So if you would just put this to this main chat, mm -hmm. um, I will reach out to you after this meeting is over. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you.
please make sure that if you have any input on our family engagement opportunities, um, that you share that information. Please note that we're going to be hosting meetings throughout the year. Um, you will have both a face-to-face -face and a, um, virtual options to allow you to provide us this input and feedback, as well as discuss anything about Title I. And we're going to be using the information, your input from surveys, um, to determine um, information that's going to go into our CNA, as well as how we're going to use our funds, um, buying resources for our Parent Resource Center, de determining the best times that we should meet, the days, and the best way to communicate with you. You do not have to wait until there's a meeting to share your input with us. You can do that at any time. So please make sure that you're reaching out to me. Again, I'm Dr. Elam. You can call the school. I'm here um, from 7.15 um, to 3.15 and beyond. Most of the time, I'm here later than that. So if you still want to call, um, you can call at any time. Even if you call and you don't get me, please make sure that you leave a message. And what I will do is I will reach back out to you. Um, I generally don't like to make parents wait, especially because you know you may have something that's very pressing. But in the event that you have to await a phone call, it should not be any longer than 24 hours um, over the weekend. It could be 48 hours. But um, generally, I'm usually respond back quickly if I know that you're trying to reach out to me. Also, you can reach out to me via email, and my email address is Deidre at Deidre.elam at gscs.org. Again, I will be sharing this information with you again. Um, for those people who are here, what I will do is I will send out um, information to you, just basically a little short recap of the meeting um, via email after this meeting is over. Thanking you so much for being here with us. All right, so here on the screen, if you have your phone with you and you have not completed our district Title I input survey, please do so. You can scan the QR code um, or I can put the link in the chat and you can do it that way. Um, so if you give me just a few minutes, at the very end, I'll put the links in the chat. I'm also going to have another link in the chat for feedback, but just hang tight. And we were thanking you so much for your input. Is there anyone who have any questions again? Someone who's raised their hand. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Culberson. You can turn your microphone on. Ms. Culberson, you have your hand raised. Okay, just type it in the chat. Are you saying the the survey is not working? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am, it is the same survey from Open House. Yes. If you were not able to take the survey during Open House, this is the same survey that we um, provided to families. Yes, ma'am, Ms. McDowell, I'll, um, please put your child's name in and I will reach out to you. Anybody who needs to ask me any questions about your scholar, if you would, just put your student's name in the chat and I will call you back. Right now, I'm noting um, who has said they want to talk to me. Ms. McDowell, I have your name. Ms. Boswell, I have your name. Ms. Anna, I have your name. Is there anybody else that I need to reach out to? Ms. Boswell, do you have another question? Uh, no, ma'am. Did I raise my hand? Your hand was, you just asked me to um, reach out to you about your grandson and the progress report. Yes, yes. De, De, uh, De Jordan Williams. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I Thank got you. Is there anybody else before I move forward? I want to make sure that I'm stopping so I can give you all an opportunity to ask any questions or to provide me with any um, feedback that you have. Okay. So when it comes to 
engagement. Please understand that your engagement here with us is vital to your child's academic success, noting that you're the first teacher for your child and that you have the most influence when it comes to their education, more so than we do as teachers and as a school. And so you're gonna know your child best. So please make sure that you're sharing this information with teachers, especially when it comes to their interests and their abilities. Um, if they're going through something difficult, please make sure that you reach out so that we're able to be supportive here at the school for the students. Also, please make sure that you're using Infinite Campus Parent Portal to get information about their academic progress. If you're not sure how to utilize Infinite Campus, um, I will, uh, I am available and I will work with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you have the ability to get in and that your profile is set up properly. And so please just let me know if you need me to assist you with setting up Parent Portal. You can also put that information, just put it in the chat, put your name in the chat and just put Parent Portal. And then I'll reach back out to you after the meeting is over and get you set up. Also, please make sure that you're communicating regularly with your child's teacher um, so that you'll know what's going on in the classroom. Um, you'll know what your child needs to be working on, if there are any missing assignments, if there are any low grades. I know that teachers are reaching out to you, but please make sure that you are reaching out as well. Also, um, ask them about their day here at school um, because there are a lot of students who have a lot to share. Um, so please just make sure you're asking them about their day. And if there's anything that you need to ask the school, please feel free to reach out to us and we can share that information um, with you as well. Also, we're pleased, we're asking you to encourage them to do their very best um, when it comes to coming to school each day. Come to school um, with the mindset of they're ready to work, they're motivated to work, and they're motivated to ask for help in the event um, that they need additional support. Okay, for today's meeting, um, this is our feedback form. I'm going to put the actual link for this in the chat, but if you would like to scan it with your phone, you can do so and complete it via your phone, or I'm going to put it in the chat and you'll be able to complete it. Um, I'm going to put that in the chat first. If you have not had the opportunity to sign in after I put the feedback form in, I'm going to go back in and put in the link for um the meeting so give me one more time give me another moment i'm going to put this link in again and that's the link just to be on the safe side if it's not working let me know so i can make sure Hopefully it is. If it's not, just copy it and put it in your browser and it should pop up. Again, is there anyone who has a question? Yes, I do. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I had asked you a question about, um, he, you know, getting emails about his progress report. Yes, ma'am. And also, uh, can you uh, send me emails on all of his teachers so I can contact them? I but I do ask him every day, how was his day? Is he feeling okay? And what, you know, do, what type of homework you have? But, you know, teenagers, you know how they are. They just tell you what um, they want you to hear. So I would like to talk, you know, talk to his teachers, each one of them, on okay. a one-on-one. -on -one. Thank yes, you so much. I appreciate yes, that. 
Miss Boswell, I'm going to be giving you a call. I'm going to get your phone number and I'm going to share that information out with his teachers and ask them to reach out to you as well. But I'll be providing you um, with their information and their email addresses as well. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there anybody else who has a question? If you have any questions, please ask those at this time. I want to most definitely say thank you for attending. If you would like any additional information on our district Title I program, you can reach out to Ms. Barbara Austin. And on the screen is her information. All you would need to do is call the district office. If you don't remember her phone number or her extension, you just call the district office and just ask Barbara Austin. As well as if you um, need any additional information on our um, district level Title I family and community engagement, um, you can reach out to Ms. True Henson. Again, you can call her at the district office um, or you can send her an email as well in the same manner that you can send one to Ms. Austin. And also, if you need any information on the school level um, parent and family engagement, you can also reach out to myself. Again, I'm Dr. Elam and I'm available to assist you. So please make sure that you are reaching out if you need any help. Um, I'm here to be supportive of not only you, but your scholar as well. Um, again, I'm also the graduation coach, so if you have any questions about anything else, um, I'm available to assist you um, in that area as well. Again, is there anyone else who has any questions? In the chat, again, I want to make sure that I put the link so if there are any um, individuals who came in after the sign-in sheet was posted in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat one more time. Please make sure that if you have not um, done so that you sign in for me as well as complete the feedback please note that the feedback is anonymous so you're sharing your information open and honestly um, don't worry about anyone knowing it's on the google form so i will simply just be sharing this um, with our district um, level personnel as well as paying attention to any comments that you make when it comes to the feedback If no one else has any questions, again, if you have, if you need me to, to um, contact you about your scholar, please put their name in the chat and I will do that. At this time, I have Ms. McDowell, Ms. Boswell, and Ms. Anna. Those are the people who need me to contact them. Is there anybody else who needs my support? And I do have a video that I'm going to post on the um, parents tab that gives you information about um, parent portal just in case we did a parent portal boot camp we've done one every year thank you miss ty i got you i'm going to be reaching out to you about your student as well um i host a parent portal boot camp um every year and that parent portal boot camp i see you miss sweet um and i help parents um set up their parent portal through Infinite Campus. And so if you're needing any support with that, please let me know. I'm available. You can call me at the school. Uh, again, if you don't get me, just leave your information and I uh, will be here and ready to help and support you. If there are no additional questions, I just want to say thank you again for taking your time to join us for today's meeting. Um, it is a joy to have families engage with us. And so please note, we will be having more um, events coming up and you're more than welcome. I'll be reaching out to you in the same manner um, to make sure that you're here. For those people who are interested in being a part of our school council, please leave your name in the chat. If you would just type it in there and then what I will do is I will um, reach out to you individually and make sure that you know when we're having our next meeting um, so that you will be in attendance. Again, thank you all so much. And for those parents who are asking for me to reach out to you, I'll be doing so in just a little while. Thank you all. Have a great day today. Thank you.